My name is Ken Stavropoulos, and this is my myeloma story. So it started off about four months ago, and I'm a very active person. Hiking, climbing, mountain biking, surfing, kayaking. And I do that about three times a week. I was surfing about four months ago, and the board hit me in the chest, caught me funny, and I immediately felt pain. And I figured I just bruised them, but I actually broke a couple of ribs. So we just sort of let that heal. A couple of weeks later, I was helping somebody move something and I broke my back. So I went to the doctor, my GP, and said, you're gonna to need to run all the labs because the previous year I had only gotten A1C, cholesterol, which you're not going to catch this if you're just getting basic labs, because I get all that every year. I'm a firm believer in all that. And uh, so he ran all the labs, and the first thing they saw was my protein spike was through the roof. And so they ran more tests, and sure enough, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. I was referred to the Marin Cancer Center which those people are amazing. I have a young doctor and she said, we got this. So the first thing that they did was the bone marrow biopsy. And that's a lot of fun. They booked me for my first treatment. But in the meantime, I went to the bathroom and when I went to get up, I fell and I couldn't get up. I'm trying to remember why, but um, so I just couldn't get up. So my wife called 911 and the uh, fire department paramedics showed up. They got me up and they got me down the stairs. They took me to the emergency room. And by this time, I'm still not on any pain meds yet. So they wanted me to get up and take a CT scan. So I said, okay. And that's when I felt this very off the chart spine pain in my lower back. And so I couldn't get up. So they slid a board underneath me. We got the CT scan. So they sent me home, but I still had this really bad spine pain. So they prescribed Norco. And the Norco didn't do anything except completely back me up. And when I got to the place where I couldn't pee, uh, that the cancer center, the vice nurse recommended I go to the emergency room. So we went there. So they flushed me all out. So when I got home, they prescribed two drugs, naproxen and gabapentin. And that made it so I could get up and make my first appointment, thankfully. And then after that, um, I was on quite a bit of it. But then over time, we tapered off and now I'm completely off of the, the nerve pain. I did have some neuropathy along the way. It went away, thankfully. Um, and then after my first treatment, the next day when I woke up, I had hiccups, which is a spasm. And that went on for about 30 minutes. And every single one was excruciating because the myeloma was still in my hips and in my back, my thoracic spine. Um, it showed up, um, but uh, where my ribs were cracked and in my chest, and it just caused weeks of a lot of internal pain. So they prescribed baclofen. And so we took quite a bit of that. Uh, we leaned on that. And then it was time for a PET scan. They gave me so many drugs, including antiviral, baby aspirin, and uh, all these things interacted. But the baclofen, once I backed off of that, I no longer had the problems that I'm about to explain. So the day before the PET scan, I went to get up and I had felt this fainting feeling before at the hospital, but I was already laying down, so it wasn't that bad. But when I went to get up, after about 10 seconds, I fainted. But I was able to climb up in the kitchen um, and get on my Lazy Boy, which I was spending a lot of time in uh, because I, didn't want to be laying down. It was just too painful. So electric 
Lazy Boy made it a lot easier for me to get up in the beginning. And so the myeloma, it gets starts multiplying in your cells, in your bone marrow, and it causes bone pain. And I had it all through my spine, my hips, my ribs, my chest, my elbows, my fingers, behind my eyeballs, and I would have these eight hour headaches. And it was pretty rough there for the first month. But, and then over time, my body started to adjust to the, all the medicine, which thankfully I didn't have any really bad side effects. And so we just kept on with the treatment and things progressively got better. And once a month, I would receive a bone mending drug called Zemeta, which completely healed the little cracks in my bones that was caused by the myeloma. And that's the reason my back broke and my ribs broke. Um, they've come a long way with the myeloma treatment. There are teams in France, Germany, Spain, Greece, United States, and all over the world, and they are making tremendous progress, not just for people like me, but for people with more difficult myeloma. And so when I went back to see the oncologist, she told me I was stage one, which is good. There are only three stages, but then she proceeded to tell me that I am high risk because I have a genetic mutation. And some people have multiple mutations. Um, so I felt lucky there, but then she proceeded to tell me that I, I was probably gonna get a stem cell transplant um, at UCSF in the beginning of next year. And once my numbers look right, which they've been incredible. So after my first round of myeloma labs, we met with the doctor and my myeloma spike went from here all the way down, the light chains. There are three tests that they do and I was doing great. And so I was very relieved because some people, they, the, the cancer does not subside and then they have to go to B, C, and D. And some people have very bad reactions to the targeted therapy and they need to stop and try other things. So these, these teams from all around the world have been making incredible progress, uh, which is amazing. Um, and not just for people like me, but people who which have much more difficult uh, diagnosis to treat. And they're using the CAR T cell. And so I'm very happy for me and all the people. And there's hope out there. And eventually they're going for a cure. There is no cure right now. So she said, if I go in and get this stem cell transplant, I mean, you're gonna lose your hair and you're gonna be sick and weak. She says the worst is behind me and it's not gonna be that bad. So we're going with that. I haven't done it yet. And then when they get the numbers the way they want it to look, then they will, it's a 45 minute injection, a blood injection of your, they call it stem cell transplant. And then once you get well enough, you go home. The other part of it is the chemo fatigue that started about three months into my treatment. And that just comes with the territory, which I am receiving Revlimid, Darzalex, and Velcade. Update, I finished five months of targeted chemotherapy. I'm halfway through my sixth month, then all treatment will stop. They will harvest my stem cells. I'm getting a new birthday, April 1st, 2024. 17 days in the hospital, two weeks at home, three to six months recovery. And uh, the last thing to come back will be my energy. Thanks for all the support from everyone. And uh, we'll see you on the other side after I get my stem cell transplant. There is no cure for multiple myeloma. But after the stem cell transplant, I will be on managing drugs and hopefully have a very long remission.
And one more thing, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Thanks for watching.